move into explaining. We're gonna explain four events in one video. Here it goes. We have creative form, we have creative weapons, we have extreme form, and we have extreme weapons. Before we go further, I'm gonna divide up the concepts of creative and extreme and explain why there are different events. Creative is designed to be the natural next step for students in their traditional martial arts training. So creative is meant to be more traditional, but students are creating their own material. Because of that, there's rules in creative that limit the creative experience and it keeps like non-traditional elements kind of out of it. So there's a few rules in play, we'll cover that in a second. For extreme, extreme is where students get to bring in uh, multiple disciplines in their style. So let's talk for a moment about gymnastics. If you have watched any YouTube, um, gymnastics are cool, uh, but should a student go to their Taekwondo competition and say, I don't know any gymnastics, I shouldn't do that event. Well, we hope the student doesn't think that. However, if they see a student throw a gymnastics technique and like a flip or something, then they might, do we want to say, that's not allowed in martial arts? We don't want to hold our students back. It's incredible to see a level of athleticism that extreme competitors bring to the table. So that is why there's a division of creative and extreme. Creative is where the student shows their own creation within the bounds of traditional martial arts. Extreme is where the student basically breaks the bounds of traditional martial arts to push their athleticism and skill to the highest level they can, okay? So, now let's jump in. There's creative material and there's extreme material. Creative forms and weapons and extreme form and extreme weapons. In creative, there's a list of techniques that are illegal and will result in disqualification. So, uh, the student cannot throw an inversion. So, a cartwheel, that's an inversion. So if the feet go over the head, that's an inversion. Uh, throwing a roll, that one's kind of a question mark because a roll could be used in traditional martial arts training, but the feet go over the head. I'll need to check on what the rule book says last I saw. Uh, I advise my students not to do a roll in their creative material. Regardless, uh, we know that inversions are illegal we know that um, certain techniques like wushu butterfly kicks, illusion techniques, gyro techniques, these are all illegal because they're outside of the bounds of traditional martial arts. Also, any jump kick, any jump spin kick where the competitor turns 540 degrees or more in the air is illegal in creative, and, and creative form and creative weapons. Last thing is in weapons, any weapon release is illegal in creative weapons. In traditional weapons training, you do not chuck your sword in the air and catch it behind your back. That is not a good idea in traditional training. But if we're looking at the art or the athleticism, then it might be a challenge, just like a slam dunk contest, right? You don't throw a slam dunk contest in the middle of a basketball game. Well, maybe you do, I don't know. Uh, but there's a time and place to push your athleticism with that slam dunk contest, okay? So now, let's move over to extreme forms and weapons. All the things that I said were illegal over here in creative, those things are legal in extreme. So you can release your weapon. You can throw a cartwheel. You can throw an inversion. Those of you who have gymnastics training, you can throw a flip. You can throw a bee twist, a corkscrew, a, a loser, a gainer. You got all sorts of tools that you can throw in extreme that you can't throw in creative, okay? Now, uh, as far as the grading of the event goes, all judges are trained for this. The first criteria is the excellence of your martial arts basics. This is still a martial arts competition. So, um, your stances, the power and precision of your blocks and strikes and kicks. These are still the fundamental quality, that's the first criteria 
of your creative extreme performance. Once we get beyond that, as we get into more difficult techniques, the how clean the trick is, and then also the difficulty level and the originality of your presentation. These are all factors that could go into a higher or lower score. Uh, there's also a risk level that needs to be looked at. So if one student throws a cartwheel and then the next student throws an aerial, so a no-handed cartwheel, but they land it kind of shaky, uh, it is common for the student who threw the cartwheel to win because this student took a higher risk level, but the technique wasn't as clean. Now, if we're looking at just that window, the student that does a higher risk level technique and it is equally clean, that student is likely to receive a higher score. Now, let me be clear. Judges don't judge based on what happens in two seconds of the performance. So competitors, don't you dare tell me he won because of the aerial. No, there's more of that form than the aerial. Keep your eye on the entire form. But when we're talking about higher risk level techniques, the difficulty is taken into consideration and the cleanliness of that higher risk technique is taken into consideration, okay? So that's kind of a quick rundown. One last thing you need to know about creative or extreme forms. In creative and extreme forms and weapons, you may use music. You need to coordinate another person to run your music for you and the music must be family appropriate, so it must be cleared with your instructor. Now, when they come up, they don't say your form should be, they say your time begins now. Once they say your time begins now, the two minute clock starts, you have two minutes. You will not be graded down for a shorter form because it's short. Keep in mind, if it's short, it means you probably didn't have a long enough time to demonstrate a wide variety of skill set. So the other person who goes longer might win based on that, but according to the rule book, you're not graded better for going long and worse for going short. Show off a variety of skill sets in whatever time you need to do that. However, if your music malfunctions, well, you'll either coach them through it, you'll deal with it, or you'll keep going, the clock keeps going, okay? So as soon as your time begins now, it starts. Uh, according to the rule book, we are trained not to change your score, whether there is music or not, except with one exception. If you are able to synchronize your form according to your music, that shows an increased difficulty level because you on a clock, and so that can be taken in consideration for a higher score. Okay, so two minutes on the clock. If your form goes two minutes and one second, you are disqualified, okay? So you need to be sure that that form stays under that two minute mark, all right? Any more questions on Creative Extreme, please feel free to reach out to your instructor or to me or to across the ATA. There's some incredible resources here. Thanks for watching my video on Extreme and Creative Forms.